The Death Masks of Arthur Griffith and Cahill Brewer. A sock worn by Eamon de Valera during a jail escape to muffle his footsteps. The pen used by Michael Collins to sign the treaty and the overcoat he was wearing when he was killed as a result of that treaty. All are artefacts in this new exhibition. Also included is a previously unknown IRA intelligence ledger used to identify members of the British forces at Dublin Castle and elsewhere. It's a photograph album that has been put together by a member of IRA intelligence having received photographs from either informants in photography studios or from auxiliaries themselves it seems um, who have passed photographs and the names of those in it. So this is it. a vital source of guerrilla intelligence? It's a vital source. It's, it's a real insight into how intelligence operations worked. I suspected that it involved the IRA. I knew from my father's family that it was possibly part of something... Well, it was intelligence because of, because of the documentation that was in it. It seemed to be of importance of some kind. It's a period that is so very important uh, to my generation and to the generations to come. We're looking at a very traumatic aspect of our past and our history and providing a space for people to find out more information both from an anti-treaty and a pro-treaty side and, and really to understand that there were atrocities on both sides um, that both sides at the time thought were justified. The museum says it's vital that a balanced history of the period is presented. Atrocities against women by both sides are also a feature of the exhibition. Women could be uh, taken out of their homes at night by members of the British forces and sheared uh, for being connected to the IRA or being a member of Common Law. And women who were unconnected to the movement could also have been taken out by the IRA and sheared uh, for uh, any perceived offence such as dating an RIC man. Donald Byrne, RTE News at Collins Barracks, Dublin.